What's up my environmentalists? All right, this week's video is going to be about the Venus flytrap if you didn't see it from the title before. This is requested by Whitney because she wanted to know, I'm not exactly sure if you want to know how they work, how you plan them, but I'll go through a little bit of everything and then I'll kind of throw something cool at the end. So uh, let's just get right up into it. The Venus flytrap commonly misrepresented as a pitcher plant, which kind of just looks like exactly how it is, a pitcher plant. Scientists don't really name things that complicated because they know the average person just kind of wants to know what it is and get on with their life. But anyway, Venus flytrap is the one that has the teeth on it, kind of looks like um, alligator or a crocodile mouth closing a very wide one, as opposed to the pitcher plant that looks like a tea, lemonade, coffee, whatever you fancy pitcher. Anyway, so the Venus flytrap, I learned a lot of cool things. I was researching everything. I'll make sure I include the citations down below in the description or at the end of the video, possibly both, whatever. Um, but the Venus flytrap, the cool thing is you don't actually plant it in soil. What you do is you get, and I have a couple things so I can show you guys, you get a plastic pot, and there's soil in here. Don't, don't put soil in uh, you get a plastic pot. You don't get a clay one. If you get a clay pot, say the one Marvin, and if you don't see him back there, I actually have him down here. The Marvin's the aloe vera plant. You don't put it in a clay pot like this one because clay might release too many nutrients. And if you see anybody in here, that's just Spider-Man. There's a Spider-Man in there. Make sure that your pot has holes on the bottom. So that way, you know, when you water it, all the nutrients and all, all the water stays in there so you don't water it too many times and that's one thing you have to be careful of is overwatering the venus flytrap think of it as a cactus it's more of a succulent so it's not going to require everyday watering i mean most plants don't require you water it every day but the reason why you don't water it every day cool thing is you actually put peat moss in it you put peat moss and horticulture horticulture sand or gravel try saying that three times fast um, you put that in there and so that way it keeps the moisture. So you don't water it every day. If you start out with a smaller pot about mm, this big about the size of a softball, you could just leave it in there, water it every two to three days. But if you put it in a bigger pot, say the one, the purple one, definitely if you put it in something the size of Marvin's pot, it's going to need to at least get misted every day. You don't need to water it just because even if the peat moss isn't wet on the top or the sand is wet on the top in the actual layers of the plant you know it may still be wet and if I look over here I wrote some stuff down so you know and I'll make sure I include the citations at the end of the video but yeah um, another thing it needs 12 hours of sunlight I found that really kind of cool because you know and if you don't get 12 hours of sunlight you can get an LED light you just turn it off or turn it down turn it down turn it off after 12 hours so you're not blasting your plant with Sun but it gets 12 hours and you know you can repot them as they grow because they start out only really really small but then they get bigger and bigger like any plant does but then it'll get bigger right and then you don't let the fly traps flower you just it's kind of similar to basil because once they start flowering, they're going to start dying off. So you don't want to let them flower. And if you take care of a Venus flytrap and you just, you know, regular maintenance, nothing fancy. If you take care of it, it should last you for 20 years, which, you know, you plant it and you give it to somebody. That's a present or that's a kind of a gift. And it's an environmental gift that'll last them literally for decades. And just a couple fun facts and I'll wrap up this video. The Venus flytrap, most people think it eats flies. It actually, its main diet consists of ants. But it eats ants, spiders, ladybugs, the pitcher plants, eats slugs, big slugs. Some of them have even eaten mice. You can go on YouTube and look up videos of the pitcher plants. It's really cool. So if you want to feed your Venus flytrap because you notice it might be looking unhealthy. Because if you have it outside, it should be fine. Because, you know, flies or ants and things will be attracted to it, so it should get its own food outside. But if it's indoors, if I'm swiping, that's probably just a fruit fly flying around. Um, if it's indoors, what you want to do is just take long tweezers, it's, as long as your fingers is fine, and just take the dead insect and just touch, like, 
the legs of the insect on the, I'm not exactly sure what you would call it, arms, I guess, teeth of the Venus flytrap. And that way it'll close up and then it'll eat it. So if you feed a Venus flytrap, what you want to do is you want to make sure the bug is only one third the length of the actual trap. So if the trap, say, is, and this is going to be a gross exaggeration just so, you know, you guys can kind of see this. But if the trap is this big, you only want to feed it a bug about that big. Too small, it won't close, and then it won't eat. But too big, and then it can't digest all of it at one time, and you might choke your plant, and you might kill them. So it can't have too much moisture. They are built to withstand acidic sands, not moisture-rich and nutrients-rich soil. So that's something you got to watch out for. You can't overwater them and don't give them any sorts of food because they get food from what they eat. So you don't want to give it fertilizer. You don't want to give it miracle Grow, none of that. If you have a Venus flytrap, you want to water it with distilled water or rainwater because even tap water can be filled with too many alkaline metals and that will kill your plant. I'll leave you with a really cool fun fact. Uh, Venus flytraps are actually native to North and South America. I thought that was kind of sweet. So that's kind of something we have going for us. We have a Venus flytrap. And yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Let me bust this common myth. If you touch a Venus flytrap, nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. It's just, you know, why expend the plant's energy to do something it doesn't need to do? It usually just does it when it needs to eat. So just don't touch it, you know. If you have flies flying around your place, I mean, if you have fruit flies, maybe we should get a couple, but... Yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Next video is going to be on the plants I got growing outside. Um, I also was able to pickle some of the sweet peppers. So I'll do that and then I'll show you what I did. I'll leave the recipe in there too in case you guys want to change it up or if you just want to pickle something. But I just keep mine in the fridge in like a mason jar, an old like spaghetti um, or can. I guess it's not a can, it's a jar. Old spaghetti sauce jar. Um, yeah, anything works. Any glass container would really work. But yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed the video and it's a gorgeous day outside. And I'm actually going to leave you with this really, really nice view of the backyard. All right, guys. I'll catch you later.